Hey, in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you all about magnetic stud finders. I'm gonna show you some pros, cons, and we're gonna test them out right after this. Okay, two of my most popular videos out there are about stud finders. And in one video, I showed you how most of you are using it wrong because you're not understanding how they work. That'll help you a lot if you haven't seen that video. And the other one was just a quick demonstration of the most popular stud finder I've ever seen. Everybody seems to love it, including me. And I'm going to show you that one too today. We're going to kind of do a little comparison here. I've got a little mock-up wall set up over here where I've got different scenarios in it. Everything from cross bracing to metal studs and you'll see some other scenarios where I'm going to show you the pros and cons of a magnet stud finder because yes, they do work, but you just need to know they can also fail. Hey, be sure to check out my new online store where I've got things like some ebooks that'll help you out. I'm going to be releasing even more of those, but I got one on common mistakes that can ruin your drywall and so on. I've got some printable guides as well as some swag you can pick up, keychains, stickers, uh, different things like that. So check it out. There's a link in the description down below. Okay, so let's move over here and get started. Okay, so what I did is I picked up a couple of these uh, stud finders, magnetic stud finders you can pick up most anywhere but I'm going to put a link to all these in the description down below the video this one they call the sling ball and I saw this on, a, on another YouTube video and it seemed like a handy way to uh, find uh, screws like if you want to remove the drywall and I'll tell you all about how you do that it's a pretty cool trick but you can see it's it's magnetic it's got a rubber rise backing on it and that's an advantage and I'll explain that here in a minute this is the uh, Hansen stud finder. It's actually got a magnet on the bottom side as well as the top and they are very strong. This one also has a little level here. So I suppose if you're trying to find a stud and go across, I'm not exactly sure the benefit of the level going that direction. So if you got any ideas why they have that, you can let me know. But we're going to test on a couple different things. So right here i just have an ordinary stud behind here i drew it out so you can see where they are behind here and then right here what i did is i put in fire blocking now i'll, I'll explain why that's important what fire blocking is and what that's for is you imagine this stud goes all the way down you put fire blocking in here if there a fire breaks out especially like on your first floor gets into the second floor things like that it can't travel up is easy it has to burn through this fire blocking so it slows down the spread of fire but that can really interfere with some things and i'll explain that here in a second so then uh, we got another stud wooden stud here now this one is a metal stud so i thought i'd throw that in there this one is an extra wide one sometime you'll have a double plate or a double stud here for extra reinforcement or they might even turn it sideways in this case it's a four by four so it accomplishes the same thing. All right, so first let's talk about some of the pros and cons of a magnet stud finder. A lot of you have commented, just ditch these fancy stud finders and get yourself a magnet stud finder because it works better. Well, in some cases it does, but I'm gonna stick to my stud finder right here and I'll tell you why here in a second. But I do like these for certain situations, so the concept behind this, I know some of you have been confused. I've seen the comments, and I know you're novices. You don't get what's the point of a stud finder if it's a wooden stud. You just saw right there what the point is. It'll find the screw in the stud. So the way you do it, I kind of know where these are. I can see them. But let's just imagine you don't, and you just kind of start searching around like this. But you actually have to go a little bit slower because I just went over one right there and it didn't stop, but it, I felt it. 
but you get to there and it locks onto it. So it gives you a pretty good idea. Now, I'm sure some of you will say get a smaller magnet is more accurate and it might be, but then I think you'd lose it more often. So I kind of like these bigger ones. So what you do is you put it on here when you find it, you just kind of pull it until you feel like it's got the most grab and that will be your center. So this one kind of works the same way, except it does it like so. And the advantage of both of these over a metal, plain metal stud finder is they're rubberized. They're not going to mark up your wall. Some of them, when you're going over your painted wall, it's going to mark it up, leave a little trail. I've seen comments about put wax paper behind it. I find that kind of a uh, pain in the butt, honestly. <laughs> Now, and these aren't really that much. I think this is under $10, so I'd rather just go ahead and get one of these or these, and that way you solve that problem. So that is the advantage. It's going to lock onto the screw when it finds it, and you, you know there's bound to be a stud there because screws don't hang out in the middle of the wall unless they're having a party. Okay, second advantage is there's no batteries, obviously. Third advantage is no calibration. You don't have to calibrate a magnet. It's going to work every time. So that also affects my number one video where I showed you the mistakes you're making. Well, a common one is to take your stud finder, put it up here, and then you move your hand. Well, they're detecting density, so it's going to throw it off. Or you get your pencil up here and get ready, or you change the position of your hand. All that can throw off the calibration. It never will on a magnet. And of course, it's a little bit cheaper. Like I say, this one is under $10. If you really want to, you might have one laying around. You can use that. It's even cheaper. So here's an advantage I saw on a video. If you have to demo a wall, you're going to take that whole wall down. And I've never done this. I think it's a cool idea, but I've demoed a lot of walls. Normally, you just beat the crap out of them and take it off in a bunch of chunks. Well, this guy showed, and I forget what video channel it was or I'd tell you. But he just showed that all you do is you find the screws. And then I think what he did is he took a small hole saw and just drilled a hole around each one. But if you really locate it well, you might better just stick it up here. And a lot of times you can just take that screw right out of there. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do it. And even though it's got mud on it, it'll usually come on out. Okay, let's go into some of the cons of a magnet. Number one is they stick to everything. That, that's kind of annoying to me. You reach into a tool bag and you got to pull off all the other tools it's stuck to. So a little minor annoyance. Uh, two is, and this is a big one, they don't always find the center of your stud. Sure, they'll find your stud. Here's the problem with them. Let's just take this one and we go here. We found the center. Sometimes, us drywallers, we barely catch the edge of the stud and it feels like it sunk, it, it recessed, everything looks good, but it actually blew out. So here's a picture in the back showing how this one blew out the side a little, but it's just enough to hold. So let's say you go up and you find this one and it says it's right there. Well, guess what you found? You found the edge. And that may cause a failure if you try to hang anything heavy in that spot. So you would want to verify the edge stud. And now that kind of applies even if you use these electronic ones. If you're going to hang a, like an 80 pound TV on your wall, you want to make sure you're as close to the center of that stud as you can be. So that's one disadvantage. Another is because of that. Novices often don't know how we put the screws in the sheetrock. You know, those of us that know we put, we generally in most areas, you put one at the bottom and one every 12 inches. So it's 12, 24, 36, and 48. Novices don't often know that. So they could be hunting around forever trying to find it. And it's just not finding it. So if you use it wrong and you don't understand the screw layout, it's not going to work. Two is, regarding this fire blocking, it can't find fire blocking. It doesn't detect wood studs like a stud. Now, why would you want to detect the fire blocking? It runs this way. Most people aren't going to look for that to hang a picture on. Yeah, you're right. Here's the reason. 
I've been on a lot of jobs where people have had the electrician come in and to run a new outlet. And so what they'll do is they'll cut a hole up at the top and run a fish tape down through here. Run it down here and pull it out the hole at the bottom. Well, if you cut a hole here and you cut a hole here, run it down and you hit that, that can really mess you up. So it would be good to know if there's anything in there. There's a few reasons you might want to know where fire blocking is and these won't detect that ever at all. Another case is in some areas I've seen like in Australia they do a lot of gluing and I know they do that a lot in the US so that means they may put a sheet like this up and put one screw in and the rest of it's glued just enough to get it to stick. That's going to make it a lot harder to find that one screw so that could be an issue too. That'll never be an issue with a stud finder. Now I know I hear some of you saying, yeah, but stud finders suck. They don't work that good. I'm going to show you one that does. It really works. I used to fight with mine too. Although when you understand how they work, they work better. But this one, you don't even hardly have to understand how they work. It just works. Okay, and to me, it's slower. Because you've got to keep hunting around for all these screws. And it takes time. So imagining I don't know where these are. I could be going, oh, there, I found one. Now I want to find the second one. And see, I accidentally missed that when I knew it was there, so I'm just showing it could happen. So it can take longer. <laughs> just grabbed onto the other one, see? Okay, let me show you how fast this one actually works. You just stick it up to the wall and start scanning. And that fast it finds it fire blocking if you want to know if there's fire blocking in there it finds that too metal studs let's go over here finds that this one if we go over to here you can see let me turn it upside down for you you can see that it tells you the width of it it doesn't just give you the edge or if you use a metal stud finder in this case I can get these two to separate they like each other so you put this up here, you find that, well, that would indicate you found a stud. Really, it's this wide. It might be handy to know how wide it is. The other one's right here in the middle. It can get confusing on one like this. This one, you run it across here, tells you the width of it every time. So yes, a stud finder works, and they can work pretty good, but they have their limitations. All of them do. Just got to understand your tool, use it correctly, and you'll find what you're looking for but you will have some failures it just happens and again i explained some of that in my other video hey i hope you enjoyed this video and i look forward to helping you guys on many many more we are going to be ramping up our video production putting out more videos so be sure and subscribe hit that thumbs up and i will see you on the next video everybody take care